I'm Father D. And I'm Phil. And wear the robe and the suit. A Christian podcast combining varying perspective and a witty debate on the impact of the Orthodox word on everyday life. Phil, here we are, entering the Triodion. Say that three times. Yes, Triodion, Triodion, Triodion. triodion, 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 triodion. Greek word. This is a good Greek word, Triodion. Uh, the Triodes. It's a special book that uh, use, we use specifically for three weeks leading up to Lent. And today's gospel is a reading that is getting us ready for Lent. Yeah. The Sunday of the Prodigal Son. Oh. Your favorite. Father, I got to tell you. <laughs> I got a real problem with this one. Over the years, I, I've had a real big problem with this I'm, one. I'm starting to see a trend. <laughs> well, I mean, over the years, right? So okay. I, I'm getting better. Okay. Okay, I got to tell you, I'm getting better. But this one, this one, there's some things going on here that beyond just what you do in your personal life with people you love around you, your friends, your kumari, you know, your cousins, the community you live in, even at work. You can't screw up like this. You can't, like, leave the other people holding the bag. And still get rewarded. This guy bailed. All right, well, let's back up. Let's yeah, back. He let's, bailed. He let's bailed. Ba- let's back up for the I, I know there's some things here, but you got to help me with that. Okay. you got to help me with this. Okay. you got the you got the father. He takes him back. You got uh-huh. the you got the you got his brother who clearly is a little perturbed. Okay. Okay. I don't okay. blame the man. Get this guy. He lived it up. Laid with the pigs. Now he's like broke. <laughs> Baba, take me back. Go ahead. Explain this to me. Okay. Come on. All right. I mean, okay. let's have a party. Kill a fat calf. You, you paint a great visual, Phil. Uh, those, are, those are some great uh, mental images. Yes. So Jesus is telling a story. This is a parable. And as we know, parables are stories that are teaching moments uh, that Jesus uses very effectively yeah. to communicate deeper messages. So he tells a story of a father who has a large estate, and one of his sons says to him, Father, I would like my inheritance now. Please. Let me have it. Yeah, pay it forward. Let's have it. Let me have it. And the son cuts all ties. It says he goes into a distant land and spends his his living, Mm -hmm. it says loosely, Mm -hmm. with, uh, I don't know if it says harlots, but his brother does say he spent it with harlots. So yeah, it was better than Las Vegas. I mean, it was, it was better, different when I was right, growing up. Or worse than Las Vegas. Yeah, right. yeah, it's different than I'm growing <laughs> yeah, up. You know, you have experiences, so you, yeah. this comes with you over time, right? Exactly. Just like all these parables. Exactly. So he gets the he gets his inheritance. He goes into it says he goes into the distant country with loose living, where he wastes his money. He loses his money. Mm-hmm. A great famine arises. He loses everything. He finds himself rock bottom. Right. Right? He has no food. He has no money. He's wasted all of his father's money. And it says that he's joined himself to one of the local inhabitants. We we don't really know what that means. But then the next line is that it says he's feeding the man's pig. So most likely... He was in like an indentured servitude. 
Right. He had to get a job. He had to right. do something. Probably one level above slavery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it says here he's watching these pigs eating these uh, uh, pig pods, mm-hmm. wishing that he could even eat what the pigs were eating. Mm-hmm. And then he has this aha moment. Yeah. What the hell did you leave for? Aha. Mm-hmm. Or the breakdown moment, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. That moment where he realizes... What the heck did I do? Yeah. What, how did I fall from grace, right? How did I mess up? How did I go from being, you know, basically a prince in my father's house? Sure, sure. To now eating with the pigs or not even. It says he didn't, he couldn't even eat what the pigs ate. Right. And then his journey back to his father's house. So he hit Barack bottom, right? Uh-huh. I mean, okay. Uh-huh. No cell phone. So do, do you have a problem with any of this so far? So or, far, or I get problem, it. He's the problem got, comes in later. The problem comes in later. And over time, I will say that, okay, okay he figured it. He got there. Like okay. most of us, when we take a hard left turn, and right. we all sometimes do that, right? We all have to. Right, right. We get to that like, okay, this is, this is the worst. Right. Like, how did this happen? What did I do? So far, I'm how did I I'm, mess I'm up? I'm tracking. I'm, I'm a little, you know, I feel a little sorry. Right. And over the years, I felt more sorrow than I did when I was growing up with this parable. Right. So I got a little, I got a little empathy right now. Okay, that's good. And that's because I learned that in corporate America. Okay, because <laughs> you got to have some empathy. There's a big, there's a big component of, uh, you know, servant leadership and empathy, and, and you have people, you have employees that do this. Right. right. And you believe in them because they have some talent. So, so you got to. You know, feel sorry for him and give him give him a shot. Hmm. Which okay. I guess is what's about to happen next. Okay. All I'm right. Assuming. What's what's gonna happen next, Phil? Oh, he's gonna <laughs> go home and we're gonna have a big party. <laughs> I mean, explain that one to me. <laughs> I mean, come on. The prodigal son returns. All right. So he essentially wakes up from his stupor. Uh-huh. He hits rock bottom and he says to himself. What, what have I done? What am I doing? Even the servants who are lower than low in my father's home have food. They have drink. They have a bed. They have heat. And here I am, I'm living in a pigsty. I got nothing. I have no one. All of my friends have left me. He says, this is what I'm going to do, right? Now, we got to give the, we got to give the kid credit. Yeah. He, he made a plan. He said, okay, um, I'm going to go back to my father. But I'm going to say to him, father, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Please receive me simply as a hired servant. Hmm. So that's a little bit of... We, we missed that part. He's I, mean, he, I, I missed he, that part growing he, up. He, so he, he did beg almost for forgiveness, but he said, I'm not worthy. He said, I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore. Mm-hmm. So he lost something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He lost something within himself. Mm-hmm. And he recognized that. Because if he had just gone back and said, hey, dad, I'm out of money. Come on. Let's go. Give me, you know, the True. father would probably would have said. True. Yeah, Too yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. So... He hits that point. He says, okay. He goes back. When he gets within the sight of the house, the father, it says, runs. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is the part that maybe, I don't know, maybe you have a hard time with. Yeah. It says the father, the father runs to his son. Yeah, he's ecstatic. And takes off his robe and immediately puts on the finest robes, takes off his gold rings, puts his golden rings on him, puts shoes on his feet and says, kill the fatted calf, let us eat and rejoice. My son was dead and now he's alive. Hmm. And that's the party I think you're referring to. Yeah. And the father and the son have this, this amazing reunion and... That's not the end of the story, but let's maybe let's get into that a little bit. Yeah. Like, it's almost being rewarded. Right. It's almost like, oh, goody, goody, goody. You screwed up. Yay. Yeah. 
And it comes off that way, you know? Right. Now, I get that part about being, you know, asked to come back as a laborer, not uh-huh. a son. Uh-huh. So now we're going to have this big party. Well, that doesn't work that way when you're working for somebody and you screw up. And you're part of a cultural environment that breeds responsibility and accountability and, you know, trust. Sure. You, you got to... There, there's some form of consequence, whether it's a timeout or you get it less of an assignment or something happens here. It's just not... Welcome back to the party. Right. Let's have a party. Welcome back. So that's where this thing starts. And then you got the other son. He's going, hey, well, hey, uh, I've been here. Like, I'm holding it up. We never had a party because I was holding it up or we were here holding it up. You got a party because this guy's coming back. What's all that about? So how, how would the story end in, let's say, corporate America? Yeah, this individual would be would come back. We'd get, a, get an understanding of what would happen in... Um, Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, 40 million you know, books sold. This guy's, Ooh. people know Stephen Covey. Okay. You know Stephen Covey. Yeah. Uh, there's a principle in there that says, first seek to understand. It's one, of the, it's one of the habits, right? Okay. So this is where you begin to understand what went wrong, mm-hmm. what's happening, how can we help this individual, and how do you try to bring him back? Okay. 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 So there's an element of that. Okay. So there, there, there is. Some there's a piece here that says let's let's try to save this talent. Him back? Yeah. Okay. Because I guess the theme is he's been lost, and now he's my back. son was right. My son was dead. Now he's alive. Okay. Yes. So there's the rest of it here somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So the son he comes back. They have a happy reunion. Okay. But there's another son. Hmm. And he's in the other side of the field, and he doesn't see the sun return, but he sees the hubbub. Mm-hmm. He sees the frenzy of activity, and he asks the other guys, what's going on? Right? Mm-hmm. And they say, oh, didn't you hear? Your brother came back. Now, I have a brother, mm-hmm. and brothers love each other, and brothers can, you know, get into arguments. Mm-hmm. Well, this brother... His first response, he is not happy that his brother is back. Sure. He immediately goes to his father and he says, what do you mean you're throwing him a party? I've been here all along. I've been working. I've been toiling. You never threw me a party. And here this guy went out with loose living, it says, with harlots, with this, with that. And now you're rewarding him? And the father says, my son, again, the amazing empathy of the father. Mm-hmm. Sure, empathy. And we have to remember the father is an image of God the father. Mm-hmm. And this is, I think, where the differences fell is the level and depth of God's love mm-hmm. will always far out exceed our ability to love. Mm-hmm. So can we emulate the father's love? Right. It's not a transaction. Maybe maybe this is one of our lessons. Can we be more like this father who is abundantly loving both sons? He says, my son, you have been with me always. And everything that I've had has always been yours. But your brother was dead and now he is alive. He was lost and now... He is found. Sure. So this theme of loss and finding is actually the third of the parables that the Gospels were picking up with. The theme of God putting a sort of higher price tag on that one thing that was lost and then he finds it. And that is more valuable than the 99 which were never lost. And not only were they not lost, they felt proud that they weren't lost. And they said, look at me. I was never lost. Hmm. I'm fine right where I was. Hmm. I'm saying my prayers. Yeah. I'm doing my all my good deeds. Yeah, righteous. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. God loves me. Look at how good I am. God says there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who's found than over 99 righteous, self-righteous, you know what. Yeah, yeah. So this story is that 
tail end of that. Right. What is lost is not found. found. Yeah, so we got to focus on the back end of this, I guess. And the older the older I got, the closer I'm getting. I'm still getting there. You know, yeah. It takes it takes time. But understanding each each one of these components right. brings it all together. So it sounds like we're uh, right on the verge of this notion of forgiveness, deep and unconditional yeah. love and Absolutely. forgiveness, For which me. seems to be the thread here going into... I mean, if the, fa- if the father didn't forgive the son, yeah. he wouldn't have ran to him. Yeah. No. If the son hadn't forgiven himself, mm. he would have probably ended up in despair. Mm. He never would have even gone back to his father, right? It's not right. just about forgiving others. You got to be able to forgive yourself. Yourself. Too. Yeah, that's true, because then he would have been completely lost. Yeah. Never come back. He n- never would have come back. Which which is an issue when you lose a real good, talented person, you know, right. in, a, in a business environment. Right. And there is this notion of, you know, give him another shot. Try to, you know, overlook the uh, damage that was done. But you don't want to... You don't want to lose trust. So I think the forgiveness piece, I'm, sh- I'm sure we're going to have more conversation about oh, forgiveness. Yes. Right? Yes, sir. It's coming. Oh, man. More forgive. Look, without forgiveness, we ain't got nothing. The older you get, the more you learn about that. But I guess forgiveness is coming. It's another one it's I have a problem with, coming. man. Next week, right? I think we're going to have a forgiveness Next conversation. Week, we're going to talk more forgiveness. Ugh. That's right. And technically, it's called Forgiveness Sunday. So right. be on the lookout for that. I'll be here. And I'll be here for that. Oh, my God, and Father. we are going to talk. You're killing me. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Right, that was so great. Have a great week. Thanks. You too. And that's a wrap for The Robe and the Suit, a Christian podcast combining varying perspective and witty debate on the impact of the Orthodox word on everyday life. Download and listen wherever you get your latest podcasts. There's no need for you to dress up. Leave the robe and the suit to us. And jump in the fray.